You're listening to 710 KURV. I'm Davis Rankin along with uh, Roxanne Garcia. You don't know about it because you don't know about it, but there is a, a resolution pending in Congress which would declare the well, the war on or the murders of uh, Christians in the Middle East uh, genocide. And it's, it's sort, of, sort of stuck in Congress. The administration is not particularly interested in it, apparently. But as you, you uh, deep readers have heard and people who listen to the radio know, that it's not just ISIS, uh, which is trying to remove all vestiges of Christianity, which has been in that part of the world since right after Jesus died. Our guest is uh, someone who's very interested, interested in this. He's a former congressman from Virginia, Frank Wolf. He is also a distinguished senior fellow at the 21st Century Wilberforce Initiative, named after uh, that fellow William Wilberforce, the English politician, England, English politician who did so much to do away with slavery. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Well, I'm glad to be with you. Thank you very now, much. Uh, I have to think or, or feel that a lot of people listening go, when you say remove vestiges of Christianity, when I say remove Christianity from the Middle East, they go, yeah, right, sure. Because of- Well, no, it's, it's really going to happen. In 2003, there were one and a half million Christians in Iraq. Today, there are only 250,000 Christians in Iraq. More biblical activity took place in Iraq than any other country of the world other than Israel. Abraham was from Iraq. Yeah. Ezekiel was buried in Iraq. Daniel lived his whole life in Iraq. Daniel was buried in Iraq. Jonah, the story of Jonah, Jonah's tomb was just blown up seven months ago by ISIS. You have 17 Christian families leaving Iraq every day because it's genocide that is being committed against the Christians and also Yazidis. And so the administration has refused to call it genocide, and there's a resolution in Congress, House Congress 75, that has almost 200 co-sponsors who are trying to urge people to contact their congressmen to, to bring this up quickly because there's a group out of England that says in five years, five years, there will be no Christians left in Iraq and no Christians left in Syria. That's uh, that's uh, that's pretty astounding. Are they being murdered uh, merely or run off? They're being uh, all all of, of the above. They're being murdered. Uh, they're being they're being run off. Uh, if you saw the, there were twenty one Coptic Christians who were beheaded yeah. by ISIS in in, uh, in uh, Libya, but it's just. The eradication. There's also the same thing is happening against the Yazidis. So, but they're literally obliterating them. They're, they're moving them out. And keep in mind, you went from 2,003 to hundred to one and a half million. You're now down to 250,000, and 17 families leave every day. So in five years, there'll literally be no Christians left. And Paul, we all we all know the story of Paul in the Bible, who yeah. goes the road to Damascus. Paul couldn't go on the road to Damascus now because it's a dangerous, dangerous road. When I was in Damascus a few years ago, we went to Straight Street, where it's mentioned in the Bible. You can't go to Straight Street now. So we're literally seeing the end of Christianity there. When I was there last year, we went to a little town up in the front line. It's Nahum. Nahum of the Old Testament. His tomb is there. Daniel's tomb, Ezekiel's tomb. And so but the world needs to wake up. Now, Pope Francis has called it genocide. Cardinal Dolan has called it called it gen- genocide. But a few other people are focusing. And it is important for the Congress. This ought to be a bipartisan issue. There is a resolution which has a, a Republican congressman and a Democratic member of Congress. So there's no partisanship to it. But let's pass this thing so we can save Christianity in, in, in the cradle of Christendom where it all began. You're talking about House, is it House Resolution 75? It's House Con Res, House Con, C-O-N Res 75. But all they have to do is just call their congressman to center and say, please pass the resolution that calls this genocide. Because by doing this, we, we make it, we, we honor those who have been killed. We, we secondly make anyone who aids ISIS subject to a crime against humanity. They are guilty of genocide. Thirdly, we bring aid to those who want to leave, some want to leave, and lastly, we aid those who want to stay because they want to create what they call a Nineveh protectorate, where 
Christians and Yanidis and other religious minorities can kind of form little enclaves and live together. Most of them do not want to leave. They want to stay there. They want to stay there, mm-hmm. and they're proud of their country. But for us not to call it genocide, you know, the West missed the genocide in Cambodia. The West missed the genocide in Srebrenica. The West missed the genocide in Rwanda. You remember Bill Clinton felt so badly about it. He went to a Rwanda, oh, yeah. Rwanda and Paul apologized. Well, those three genocide groups were hiding what they were doing. We're missing it in, in Iraq and Syria, and yet ISIS isn't hiding it. You can just go on the Internet and you see every day what ISIS is doing. They're bringing the end of Christianity in the cradle of Christendom. Uh, ISIS has, has made it their plans known. Are there any other groups or variants of religion, when I say that, meaning, well, that have it as a policy to persecute and murder or run away Christians? Well, there are some, but ISIS is the number one, and they're, they're, they're bringing genocide against several groups. Christians, number one. Yazidis, young, we were there. We met with young Yazidi girls that have been kidnapped by ISIS. They want to eliminate the Yazidis. Also, there are a couple small religious groups, the Turkmen and the Mandean there. So we say that the resolution calls a genocide against Christians, Yazidis, and other religious minorities. But the very fact that this is not moving with rapid speed, mm-hmm. when you go to Dachau in Germany, there's a sign outside at that concentration camp that said, never again. It's in five languages. It's happening again. It's happening this very moment. And if we don't wake up and do something about it, we will no longer see Christianity in the place it all began. Why Why won't Congress move it well, think. because they're not hearing from their people. Everything that takes place in Congress is downstream from culture. So if a congressman isn't really hearing about it, he or she is really not focusing on it. I mean, there are some exceptions, but so that's why people have to call their congressman. You don't have to worry about the number. Just say, pass the resolution that calls a genocide against Christians and other religious minorities, period. Frank, Frank, and, and no, let me reintroduce you. Though, if We're you, going to see terrible things happening. Frank Wolf uh, represented a district in Virginia for many years. He is now no longer in Congress. He is affiliated with the uh, 21st Century Wilberforce Initiative, Wilberforce Organization, which is at 21wilberforce.org. Do, are, is it, let me back up. I would think one reason that uh, Congress might not want to do it other than they don't think people care because they're not hearing from anybody would be there's a money Im- implications. No, there's no money. money. There's no money. Right. No, no money. Doesn't cost any, Thanks. doesn't cost any money at all. So you've no, got, you, is, you've been around there for a long time. What's going on through the administration's many heads? Well, the this? administration won't call it gen- genocide. I mean, frankly, this administration, why? I, I, I don't understand. I mean, I think it'll be, I mean, I think it'll be a blight on this administration when they leave that the fact that they've left. Now, there are some in the administration that want to call it genocide, but overall, Secretary Kerry has not wanted to, and the president has not wanted to. So, I mean, if if they want to call the uh, the administration, they'll probably never get a call into it. But you can call your congressman, and you can call your senator. and, And by doing that, it will help move this. We would hope this would pass certainly before the end of February or the beginning or, or, or the middle of March. But keep in mind, you've gone from one and a half million down to 250,000, and this group has said in five years to be none left. Every pastor, every rabbi, every priest, everyone ought to be mm-hmm. up in arms about this because we're going to see the end of Christianity. All right, uh, former Congressman Frank Wolf, thank you for your time this afternoon. And all all uh, he wants you to do is call your local congressman, the one of the three here, and tell him to pass House House Resolution seventy five, or just say pass the resolution to call it genocide, and they'll get the message. Thank, thank you very much for doing a story on this. I appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're listening to okay. seven ten KURV.